Get strapped in. It's just about time to get the party started. And off we go from Cleveland. Fielded right around the eight. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. And they will be led out by the youngster, the rookie, their QB. Tell you what, partner, he might just be a rookie, but he certainly looks the part of a veteran NFL starter, and he carries himself like one leading the offense out there. In a lot of ways, he is advanced as a first-year quarterback, and he came in and was right at home with this offense. And they'll run the option to start the drive. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. It's a loss of four on that first play, and it's second down. But sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion, and I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw a defensive end right in his face because he looked up and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Three yards is the pickup, but it leaves him still needing 11 here on third down. We're backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Purdy with it on third and long. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. A gain of four, not enough. And it looks like punt time on their opening drive as it's fourth down. Well, able to get the completion, but unfortunately not able to get the third down conversion there on that play. And I like how the defense approached that one. They knew where the first down marker was, and they decide whatever you want to have, you can. You're just not going to get the first down. Excellent tackling right there. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. Back deep, Jakeem Graham. It'll be a 45-yard punt and couple that with a loss on the return. And the Browns will take over first and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. Leading the charge will be their quarterback, always fun to watch, Deshaun Watson. If you ask coaches at any level to design their ideal leader of a team, I think they're going to check every box with this guy. He's got the poise to handle responsibility. He stays calm under any kind of pressure, and he brings out the best of his teammates each and every week. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10 at their own 22. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb, and he is going to lose yardage here. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well defense right there. He saw the play in front of him and able to hold the point of attack. Then he sheds it and goes and makes a tackle for a loss. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Off of play action, it's Watson. And a quick throw here, that's complete. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. For the middle linebacker at a 4-3, so often the captain of the defense gets them all lined up, and the captain made a great read there to snuff that play out. And you can just see that whole play developing. That's where, as a defender, you just lock in on your target and say, I'm not even thinking about breaking stride. I'm running straight for the belt buckle because where it goes, that's where you find his body. And he was able to get in there and make a great play. And the next-gen stats tell the story as he was traveling at better than 19 miles an hour. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Throwing on third down, Watson. Letting one fly deep for Cooper. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Quarterbacks will go to 
time on manipulating the defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. On fourth down, on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. Back deep, Ray Ray McLeod. Taken from just outside the 30. They'll net only 35 here following a 43-yard boot, 8-yard return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. And the crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. Being chased out left. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. Picked up by Martin Emerson. And the Browns will take over here as they get it up to the 43-yard line. And the tough thing is when he goes back and reviews the film, he'll see that he already escaped the pocket. He could have gotten more himself by using his legs, and that might have been the better choice there instead of challenging the zone. A miscalculation on his part, and he pays for it with the interception. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. They go up the middle with Chubb. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That's a very nice game there. A confidence building run. Love the execution up front and the way he pressed the hole. Absolutely perfect. Back to back good plays. Have them on the move on first down. Here's Watson. That's complete. It's Elijah Moore. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. You always worry about those smaller receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. A little second effort there on the strong run. And then drop just inside of the 20. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. Second down, here's Chubb again. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. 
The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive, much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, okay, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. So first and goal now from the seven-yard line. No score after one on EA Sports. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they go to work on a first and goal. They'll run with Chubb. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb taking it in from seven yards away. And the Browns post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Some good running there at the end of the drive. He had the burst that set up the first and goal, and then one play later, he's in the end zone. Brandon, what I liked about that sequence is I'm not sure who made the play call, but they understood the situation, understood the momentum. A nice hard-charging run, give it right back to him and let him cap things off. Extra point by York is up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded right around the eight. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The 49er offense now making their way out onto the field. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and 10. The drive will start with an option going left. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. On second down, McCaffrey. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. He'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. Now a loose football, the ball comes out, and this is picked up by the Browns. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept, though, at jarring it free. Yeah, it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles caused because now, if you're an offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think you should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. <laughs> but the bottom line is, no matter how much you try to protect it, these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out. On 
On the carry, it's Chubb. And he's got some space here. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. Pretty explosive run on that inside handoff. And when you're a runner of his caliber, you don't need a big crease. You really don't. But also what we're seeing is an offensive line that's taking charge at the point of attack, aren't we? Not only are they controlling the initial contact, they're actually utilizing what they call the stream the next two to three seconds to continue to move people. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. A shotgun snap for Watson. And he'll hit the slant route. That's caught by Cooper. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. Well, this is a defense that's definitely on their heels now because they gave up the running play for good yardage one play ago. Now the pass here sets this offense up first and goal. They're going to have to dig in strong now because they've been in retreat so far in this drive. This offense on the march. To throw is Watson. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Drake Jackson. Credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Well, if you're going to throw the ball on first and goal from the two, the worst thing that should result is an incompletion for you offensively. But, Brandon, this is a different type of football. Back in my day, first and goal from the two, a lot of big people with big neck rolls, they were on the field trying to ram it into the end zone. It's second and goal back to the eight-yard line now. Watson got a man and he hits him in stride the catch good for six yards but now it's third and goal it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago and I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense and guys want to be involved they can be in line close to the line of scrimmage they can split out like receivers but hands route running speed and some toughness to go across the middle Touchdown, Browns! Nick Chubb, he scored on the ground and through the air. And the Browns go up by two touchdowns. CD for them, this has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment and you have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Extra point by York is up and good. And it's now 14 to nothing. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. Takes it at the seven. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where... The coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Add one, tell me once, you know, when we're having a tough patch, this too shall pass, this too shall pass, and then finally we kept having a rough patch. He said, but you've got to do something <laughs> Heads up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. And he's going to have a Niners first down as the tackle made just shy of the 40. 
We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They stay on the ground, McCaffrey again. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv, and you run into a tough crowd. A handoff left, McCaffrey. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. 40 yards rushing for him now to this point. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. And how about the dime look here? Six DBs on third and inches. Daring them to run the ball. Purdy looking to throw. That's complete, it's Brandon Ayuk. And he is going to have a Niners first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. That's a big conversion there on third down because they did not want to give the ball up here late in the half. They'd love to take the clock all the way down and score. This will definitely help the cause. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. Throw left side. McCaffrey's got it. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. To throw again on second down. Purdy, that's over the middle and caught by Ayuk. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 18. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. I got you, baby. Who's going to let the play, baby? Oh, it seems like they're going to rock and roll, baby. Yeah. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Purdy will look to throw again here. Got a man right side, it's McCaffrey. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. The throwing here, Purdy. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Denzel Ward right there in coverage to get the hand in. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Zane Gonzalez, the former Browns kicker, out for the field goal against his old teammates. From the right hash, this from 33. Gonzalez's kick is good, and they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. 
Well, the good news, at least they won't take that goose egg into the locker room. Maybe a little something to build on. Yeah, it hasn't been the greatest of first halves for them, has it? But at least now, as you mentioned, they put some points on the board. And it's been funny in our experience watching games. Sometimes something as little as a field goal can change the fortunes of a team. And they could come out and look real sharp in the second half. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The offense trots back out there. Let's turn our focus now to Nick Chubb. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Now a first down throw, Watson. He'll get this to Chubb out of the backfield. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. I think the best offenses love to give the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. A final shot before the break. Watson, and he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with the pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of this first half of play. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point count. Well, time is of the essence. We breeze through halftime, and we are ready for the second half. And we welcome you back now. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, getting set for quarter number three here. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. This is taken just shy of the 10. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. On first and 10, Watson. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. Let's go! An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now it's Watson. That's to the right side and complete to Najoku. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. On first down, Watson. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. 
And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Again, it's Watson. They set up the screen to Chubb, and he'll be brought down at the 27. The key to any screen play is all in the deception. That means everyone on the offensive side of the ball, but someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game. Here's Watson. Going down the middle, and it's complete. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. And Chubble try the middle here. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard that time, second and goal. And now defensively, you have to look at this like the game's on the line. It's just the third quarter, but another touchdown given up here could really spell an end to their chances. So they need to toughen up and keep them out of the end zone. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. They'll try again with Chubb. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Browns take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. But finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. The York on now for the extra point. And it's 21 to three. So that drive in total eight plays. And Nick Chubb the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. From the 10. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll try to get the running game going with McCaffrey. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. 50 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, 
run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. On well, a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. He'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. Purdy's throw taken in by Samuel. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Up the gut, McCaffrey. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps him advancing the ball. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Purdy will set up to throw it here. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you definitely got to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Here's Purdy. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. And the screen only good for three that time, and it'll bring up a fourth down. Boy, that one was well read defensively. This is all about diagnosis as a safety and being decisive because he saw it setting up in front of him, able to knife through there and make the play. They'll run with a fullback, use check. And a loose football. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, if these guys wanted to get back in this game, they needed an almost perfect second half and down three scores. A lost fumble here certainly doesn't fit into that plan. That reminds me of my plan in college to get an A on the papers I turned in, but that didn't work out too well either. <laughs> too many mistakes by both of us. <laughs> I mean, that's just pure and simple. And that's why that's exactly where they are in this ball game. They're going to need a huge turnaround if they want to try and win this one. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Following the fumble recovery, Watson. And he gets it to his running back, Nick Chubb. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Three quarters have come and gone. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. They'll go left side on the ground with Chubb. And some room to work. 
And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. 86 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. And again, it's Chubb. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. And I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off a game. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Up the middle, it's Chubb. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Over the middle, Amari Cooper. It's complete. And the Browns are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up for the first and goal. They give the Chubb out of the gun. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb, an eight-yard touchdown run. As his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. And let's not forget he had the receiving touchdown earlier. Now a trio of rushing touchdowns. Quite a performance. Diversification, that's all you can talk about. His ability to do everything leaves him on the field on every down on offense because you can hand it to him as we've seen. But you said three rushing touchdowns and of course throw it to him where he's caught one as well. Extra point by York is up and good. And they open the lead up now to 25. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds. They've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. 
And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. On second and ten, Purdy. And now another turnover as this one's intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns' defense has a touchdown. Well, this one was already ugly, and now it's just kind of becoming a feast on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, partner, this is a unit that knows they've got this game in the bag with this huge lead. And it's going to drive their coaches crazy because they're telling them, play it straight, do all the right things. But these guys are going to be freewheeling now. All of them are going to take chances. And that one pays off with an INT and a return for six. A York now for the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This is taken just shy of the 10. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. And you can sort of sense their dejection. That last pick six put the icing on the cake, so to speak, in what has been a rough go for them. Fresh off that pick six, here's Purdy. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there, it's going to artificially inflate. Kevin Stefanski consulted with his guys above, and they've told him, throw that challenge flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So for Kevin Stefanski, a smart decision to throw the flag. Second and ten. Now Purdy. And he's taken down. This will be a brown sack. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. And this offense on third down today, they've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 16. Ball had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. 
They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Niners go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Browns are going to get this thing back. Excellent field position. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> From the gun, it's a give to Chubb. And a short gain here, down to the 22. There to stop him on the defensive side, Fred Warner. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Here's second and nine. Faking the give, now Watson. Touchdown, Elijah Moore, a 22-yard touchdown grab. And the Browns add six more to their point total, and they're on cruise control right now here in the fourth. As that lead just swells and swells. Look, this has been dominance in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. So don't we have to give a lot of credit, not just to what we've seen today, but the preparation in advance, coaching staff, commitment by the players to the game plan, and being ready to go in this one, you're exactly right. Clean sweep, and boy, they're going to celebrate this one after it's over. And on the other side, this is the game film you just flush and never go back and review. Extra point by York is up and good. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. Takes it at the seven. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. Charles, we know that this offense is aggressive. We saw that last drive. They went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. Then they give up the touchdown. So now you feel like they really need to respond here. They certainly do, but let's face it. Sometimes when you take that risk, you understand if you fail, a little more onus goes back on your ball club to try and pick themselves back up. On first down, Purdy. He'll get this into the hands of Ayu. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. There's Purdy on first and 10. Oh, this is going to be caught along the sidelines. Probably shouldn't have been caught. He's going to lose yardage there. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. I believe I can see what they were trying to do there, but unfortunately, the back ran out of room. Too close to the sideline. And for defenders, we're often taught 11 on the field. Those sidelines can become the 12th defender. It worked to the defense's advantage on that play. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. Well, I mean, look, obviously there's no 20 or 30 point play in that playbook, but they can try to end things here on a positive note despite trailing big. And that looks like what they're trying to do here by pushing the ball downfield. Well, let me go with the heavy cliche then, partner. Just control what you can control right now. And all they can control here is how their final plays develop. Purdy sets up to throw again. 
That's going to be caught by Samuel. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. Now on first down, it's Purdy. And his throw is going to be incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Purdy. That's over the middle and caught by Ayuk. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 26. 11 yards for number 11. Now, fourth quarter, certainly not enough time for a comeback, but nice to see them making use of the time remaining to try and make this one a little more respectable. Yeah, I think the ultimate goal, good execution, be crisp, be sharp, and find a way to put some points on the board to make this thing look just a little bit better. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Back to throw, Purdy. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he's going to get this down near the 25. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Again, it's Purdy to throw it. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. We all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but definitely not today. His team trailing by multiple touchdowns and a late sack, just a parting gift from the defense for him to take back to the locker room with him. And this will be broken up and incomplete. Now a penalty flag down. And they may be going backward here. So they elect to decline it. And why not? Just go ahead and let the play stand, and they'll take that. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out.